While retirement is generally seen as a time of relaxation and self-focus, God calls us to love, serve, and help others for a lifetime. He has been preparing us for this retirement season literally our entire lives. In retirement, countless Christians enter a state of spiritual dormancy, not knowing how they are called to have an impact for God's kingdom. The Retirement Reformation seeks to encourage and empower the 50 million Christians approaching or in retirement to embrace the calling God has been preparing in them. When the world says it's time to stop, you can begin to have your greatest impact. Welcome to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, where our goal is to journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Reaching out to the 50 million Christ followers who are in retirement or already approaching retirement or maybe on the way to retirement, you've tuned into I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. I'm your host, Jim Brangenberg, along with Bruce Brinesma, the founder of the Retirement Reformation. We'd like to welcome you to today's broadcast. Please check us out online, retirementreformation.org, retirementreformation.org. The Retirement Reformation is committed to encouraging a movement where every Christ follower is competent in God's plan for a lifetime, not just a job time, but a lifetime of faithful service and commitment to helping the body of Christ reform its understanding of retirement and then bearing fruit without measure for the remainder of life. We assert the biblical truth that Jesus followers are called to bear fruit in every season of life and affirm that commitment with the 10 principles of the Retirement Reformation Manifesto. Bruce Brinesman is the founder of the Retirement Reformation, is here today to introduce principle eight of the manifesto, which is focus. Bruce, welcome back to I Retire for Him. Always good to be here, Jim. And I'm really excited about the topic that we've got to talk about today because it, uh, it, it, it's one of those topics that allows us to get rid of all the other voices, get rid of all the other noise, get rid of all the other things, and be able to find our focus. Right. So it's all about bringing in our focus. And so you're going to help us do that. But Bruce, why don't, before we get started talking about focus, just remind us what the heart is behind the Retirement Reformation. You know, the heart behind the retirement reformation is change, is to change the way, to help change the way for the 50 million uh, of us that are Christ followers here in the United States that are, say, 60 and older, and to be help us change our understanding, our focus, what we, how we think, and how we act, and to be able to realize that we have this unbelievable opportunity in those last 30 years of life that God has now given us to be able to impact the kingdom, to find freedom and joy, and to do it with meaning and purpose. Bruce, thousands of retirees and soon-to-be retirees have signed the Retirement Reformation Manifesto on your website, retirementreformation.org. Why should our listeners today, who are joining us maybe for the very first time, why should they go out to the website and sign it as well? Well, my grandfather had a saying, and I think I've shared it on our prior webcast, but it just, it is so apt. It's once begun is half done. So how do you know that you've taken a step from a life of leisure, or as some would say, nothing, but a life of leisure to a life that includes meaning and purpose and the call that God has on your life? How do you know that you're either ready to, or that you've taken uh, uh, you've done something to symbolize for yourself. I know in the church that I belong to, we have an altar call every single week. And our pastor suggests that anyone who has not accepted Christ as their personal savior, take that step and come forward. Well, this isn't like an altar call, but it has a similar purpose in that when in fact we take that first step of first of all, reading it, thinking about it, maybe praying about it, agreeing with it, and then wanting to affirm it. That's that first step for you. And it's also the first step in modeling for others. It's almost like a recommitment of our faith. It's the under, and it's a recommitment because of our understanding. Our understanding changes as we get older. And we, and we understand our heavenly father deeper. So many people may have been believers for 40 years already or 50 years, but they get into retirement and, and they've, most of us have been given a wrong idea about retirement. 
And this is really just a, a whole opening of our eyes to what's the biblical perspective on it and a recommitment that God's not done with me yet. Jim, let me, uh, let me just remind us, let me remind, remind our listeners of the, of the Bible verse that, that we use that we think encapsulates the heart of the message that then you can grow from. And, and, and that verse comes from John 15, 16. And where Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I chose you and called you to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And whatever you ask for in my father's name, he will give you. And then he continues and kind of ends up with a parenthetical phrase, which I, I think is maybe even the most important. Don't forget to love your neighbor. But the idea that we are chosen we are called to bear fruit. Those are powerful, powerful thoughts, at least for me. And you use that word parenthetical. You know, people, they don't, it's, it, I was like five syllables, five syllable word. You got to make sure we explain that kind of thing. So listen, what is the principle number eight of the Retirement Reformation Manifesto? What is it? Well, here's what it says. And let me read it to you. We intentionally, key word, we intentionally focus our activities on kingdom building activities. So let's take that apart a little bit. That word intentional, what that suggests to us is that there are choices. One of the choices is to do absolutely nothing, to convince ourselves that leisure has meaning and value and to pursue that focus. Intentionally means that we have given some thought to what it is that God has called us to do. Perhaps that thought has is, is come up as a result of, of our, our, our reading the Bible, of our prayer time, and of just listening to the power of the Holy Spirit. But the key word is intentional. It's not something you just fall into. It's not something that just kind of shows up, but it is an intentional act by you for what purpose? Purpose, kingdom, building activities. You know, and it's so important that in the word intentionality, which we talked about in the last podcast, it's being taught to live intentional. And then once you've decided, okay, I want to be intentional with my time, whatever time I have, then to focus in on not just activities, not just to be busy, but kingdom building activities. So taking that intentionality and driving it deeper to be focused on kingdom building activities what does that look like for you in your retirement years, Bruce? How does focus come into play? Well, focus comes into play with, with what I've been called to do in this last session of uh, season of my life, which is to focus on the message of the retirement reformation. And so each and every day I'm looking for, I'm, I'm adopting, I'm, I'm reading, I'm talking to others and attempting to continue to understand in a deeper, in a more personally significant way, what in fact my focus as bringing the message of the Retirement Reformation, how do I do that? What does that mean? Seeing every single day more and more ways that the message applies. And so as we dig deeper, and I think your, your words are exactly right, it's narrowing the focus and then digging deeper. When we come back, we're going to talk about digging deeper and really talk about as our energy diminishes in retirement, how do we still remain focused? Because God is not done with us until our last breath, and then he's got a new plan for us after we start whatever we do, breathing again in heaven. We'll be right back with more of I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. Hang on. Membership has its privileges. And with the Retirement Reformation, it's true. We have three levels of membership to access our growing wealth of resources. We also provide discipleship and training to bring the Retirement Reformation alive in your life. So join us. Go to retirementreformation.org and click on the Membership tab. Choose the level of membership that will help you rethink, retool, reframe, and reform your retirement today. The basic level is free, so you can get started today. Take the journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. 
retirementreformation.org. Let's get back to more I Retire For Him. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. Hey, every segment to Bruce Bryan's, but you bring in a special guest to just share something that, that could deepen our hearts towards understanding what God really has in mind for us during our retirement years. Who do you have for us today? Well, I have a returning guest is my friend Gary Hogue. And uh, one of the things that I've learned about Gary is that you can pick any subject that has a spiritual or a practical Christian dimension to it, and we can have a great great conversation. So we're going to have one of those here in the next few minutes. And, and I want to lay this up uh, conversation in, in from a personal standpoint, in that for whatever reason, uh, God in the last week has brought three different people into my life that have brought up the issue of spiritual growth from the con- context of fasting. And I have to say that in, in, in my Christian walk, in my Christian experience, fasting has not been a critical piece of, of that. And yet, so God's bringing these to me, and one of them is through Gary. So Gary, when we talked to before, you mentioned that there were really three things for, for those of us that are in those retirement years and others also that we really ought to pay attention to you. And it started with fasting and there were a couple more. So lay those out for us, will you? So thanks, Bruce. And thanks for having me back. Um, I want to, I want to put a banner over the word fasting just because I want to, I want to reframe it for people. Cause most people just think, Oh, you know, skip a meal or something like that. And the, the framework I want to say is that fasting, I think, according to Jesus, and I always do take it back to biblical stuff because I'm a New Testament scholar, but fasting is really teaching us through action to wean ourselves off what we think we need to discover what God knows we need. Does that make sense? I'm going to interrupt that. Weaning us off of what we think we need and to what God knows that we really need. Wow, that is powerful. That's right. So, so now with that framework, let me give you the three things that I think, um, especially retirees should fast from. The first one is fast from food. Um, maybe your rhythm might be, um, if I go all the way back to the Didache, they chose two days a week. This is the early church discipleship manual. They chose two days a week with which they would skip meals. So let's say you skip a meal or two each week. Do that, to, and it will remind you that God's your faithful provider and that in him you have enough. That's the first thing. Fast from food, and it will remind you, because the, the, the bombardment on retirees is, I don't have enough. And it'll remind you, wait, God's my provider. He's provided my daily bread. I have enough in him. Does that resonate with you, Bruce, that first one? Oh, it does. And I think for retirees, you know, one of the things they enjoy doing so much is going out to eat. And so you know, there's just an extra exclamation point on, uh, on that, on, on, on that uh, perspective. Right. So, so instead of a day a week or two days a week going out to eat, skip that meal and feast on truths and promises in scripture, which will nourish your soul. So when you think of fasting from food, think it's feasting on Jesus. It's feasting on Man, you watch, humans shall not live on food alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's Jesus quoting Deuteronomy. So it's find your nourishment from God. That's the first one. The second one is fast from technology. When we do this, we remind ourselves we don't need constant entertainment, and we actually will find peace with fewer ads bombarding us. What do you think of that, Bruce? Well, I think it's not only true, but I, I think for many of us, it's actually become an addiction. And so, so there's, a, there's a dimension of this, which is a surface dimension of, of finding quiet and a time. And Jesus did that forever. I, I can't imagine if he were alive today and he were going into the wilderness of Colorado, we'd take his cell phone along. Uh, so I, I think that's really right on. I'll give the example on fasting from technology of a retiree, my accountability partner. He's 70 years old. His name is Tom. And Tom would say this, I had to limit my news intake 
to one hour a day because it was changing me as a person. It was all consuming. It was, I was losing my soul in the process of being consumed with, with the news. So for him, fasting from technology was, I'm going to limit it so that I can make bandwidth for that which matters in life. Perfect. Perfect. I he, absolutely, absolutely right on. That's right. Last third area, when we fast from other luxuries, that is the, everything the world says, you need this, you deserve this. When we fast from the luxuries, we remind ourselves we can be content with what we have. Or as my grandfather used to say, I have everything I need because I've learned to control my wants. Because if you don't watch this, if you don't control your wants, your wants control you. And that's the person who's never content, who's always got to have more, buy the bigger, faster, stronger. And so when we fast from luxuries, in other words, when, the, when it's going to be a purchase and you pause and you say, wait, let's just pause. You might eventually go make that purchase. But a lot of times you'll realize, I really don't need that. That is, uh, that is so true. And then there's a, a dimension that is, has come uh, to me in, in the last few weeks also that I'm, I'm, uh, I'll use the word wrestling with. That's not quite the right word. I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I know that God is leading me to make a decision to do it, uh, is, to, uh, is to take a one- or a two-day retreat where I'm off by myself. Uh, I don't have any electronic gear. Um, I, I, I don't have any. I got my Bible. I've got my journaling document, I've got a pen, and I'm away, wherever away is, and, and really fasting from those things that you've talked about and finding a way for God to, to really speak to me. For those who I've talked to who have taken that step, uh, they have, have just said, you know, that's something that every Christian really needs to do. I don't know if you've experienced that or not, Gary, but... Uh, uh, do you have any thoughts on on that taking that next step and maybe packaging those three items that you've talked about into one experience um, annually or uh, periodically? Sure, I, I do it regularly. For me, I call it a, a quiet day. Um, and what that quiet day is, it's turning off all the noise so I can hear God's voice. It's even shutting out um, the desire for food so that I can feast on that which will satisfy me. Um, when we fast and pray, and what the greats Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther did was they combined fasting, prayer, and confession, and that is confessing what is true and our dependence and need for God. He shows up, he delivers, he saves, he guides, he provides. Um, all heaven broke loose in the book of Acts when they fasted and prayed. So do that for a time, maybe even combine worship with it. You know, if you're out in his creation, worshiping him, that's the confession of his glory and, and praise. You'll find just like in the Old Testament with Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther in the, in the early church in Acts, you're going to have the clarity, vision, direction. He's going to meet you with what you need. Well, I'm excited about about the doors that this opens for our listeners, the doors that it opens for me, and and to to be able to um, be thankful for the years that God is giving us now for these thirty years that we call retirement, so that in fact, as you as we make these discoveries of how our our spiritual journey can be enhanced, uh, how our life can be uh, content. And, and that we have then these years to be able to do two things. One, experience them ourselves. And secondly, to be able to share that with other with generations coming up so that, in fact, as the body of believers, that, in fact, we can continue to work and build his kingdom. Gary, is there anything about anything that you've written or anything else that you'd like to share as we wrap up uh, this conversation? Sure. Thanks again for listening, everyone. If you want to dig deeper. If this was just like one potato chip and you want to dig into the whole bag, I would say um, uh, go easy because the topic was fasting. But do check out a free PDF, an ebook that I co authored and edited with Tim McCready that um, uh, called Purposeful Living Financial Wisdom for All of Life. You'll find insights in there, not just about fasting, but on um, making the most of your retirement years. We'll make sure that that book is available. Uh, as, a, as a download 
on retirementreformation.org. Gary, our, our blessings and prayers for you and the ministry that God's got you, um, you know, right up over your head in, and uh, and that uh, you'll just continue listening and because it's it's making a difference worldwide, and I know that your insights made a difference to our listeners today. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bruce. We'll be right back with more on I Retire For Him. The Retirement Reformation website, online at retirementreformation.org, has a growing number of resources designed to help you in what may be the most productive part of your life journey. Let the door open into your last third of life with meaning and purpose, which leads to freedom and joy. Set the loneliness aside and experience the encouragement and support you need through online courses, support groups, books, prayer guides, life direction studies, and webinars, all designed to help find the new direction already planned for you. God does have a plan. Let us help you discover what it is. Make the journey from retirement to reformation so you can say, I retire for him. Go to retirementreformation.org and check out our resources tab. Now back to more I Retire For Him. Hey, welcome back to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece for the Retirement Reformation. Wow, Bruce, what a great conversation with Gary Hogue. So excited that you brought him back. He's got so much to say, so much energy. It's fun to share that the, share the show with him. He's focused. I mean, if you talk about being focused in retirement, Gary Hogue definitely demonstrates that. How does, you know, we, we talk about focus and, and we didn't finish reading the, the whole principle for number eight, the principle number eight of the Retirement Reformation Manifesto. It starts with focus. We, intentional fo- we intentionally focus our activities on kingdom building activities. Not every activity is beneficial, especially those that are self-indulgent. Our priority is those activities growing God's kingdom, those activities that will lead to the expansion of his church. We need Jesus and his Holy Spirit to commission and guide our activities. So my question is, most people think retirement's all about stopping with focused activities. Like I've been focusing for 65 years. I'm tired of focusing. I'm ready to just not focus. Is that even possible? No, it's really not. Let's take the person who, um, who uh, is at this point in time, totally committed to their golf game so that, the other activities that they could consider have been set aside and they're totally focused on their golf game. What do they do? Well, it's not just saying I'm going to focus on golf, but then there's a whole series of activities and understandings. First of all, you can read a book. You can see what other people who have been successful golfers have done and apply yourself. Second, you can find a coach. You can go take some lessons and you can learn more about what it takes. Then you go out and you practice, and then you can play with others. And so there's a whole series of things as you dig deeper. Well, that's true for every subject, including kingdom building activities. So let's say that you're, that the passion of your life is uh, disabled children, and that you, you've identified, you've gone through perhaps the study guides that we've provided, uh, but you have gone through a process and you realize that that's a passion of yours. Well, the next thing in in terms of digging deeper, so you've narrowed your focus, but now understanding what does that look like? What services are needed? What's available? And where can you step into the conversation that in fact you are passionate about as a bigger topic, but now we take it more, uh, we we take it in depth. And, And so I think between understanding what a golfer does and the passion that will lead to a kingdom building activity. uh, Hopefully that will add a little bit of clarity. Well, and I think we could draw the the correlation even further because if somebody's going to become a a, a professional golf, not professional golfer, but they're going to focus their retirement years on golf. They're also going to invest a lot of money, not only a lot of time, they're going to watch golf on TV. They're going to go to the golf, the driving range. They're going to, they're going to buy a golf cart because they're going to live in a golf community and they're going to buy all those golf clothes and the special golf shoes and probably need an upgrade in their golf clubs. It's this, it's a whole lifestyle that they're investing in and being intentional and focusing on our activities on kingdom building activities, the same kind of thing. We're going to go all in. No, you don't have to buy a special driving mechanism and you don't have to watch it on TV, but you could watch some cool stuff on TV 
and you can read. You don't have to buy special clothes, but there's a, that level of intentionality goes a lot deeper when you go all in. One of the words that comes to mind is immersion. You immerse yourself in the topic with the people and understanding. And as you do that, it goes. I, I, have, a, I have a friend of mine that a number of years ago, he realized that it was working with kids was important. So he started working with a high school group at his church. Then that high school group uh, uh, took a, uh, uh, a work project in another state. And he went with them as, to do that. And, and boy, he, he learned about the value of being able to connect and be able to provide service. Then that same group, they took a trip down to uh, Latin America. And when he got down there, he realized the needs of younger people that are there. That opened up his checkbook. That opened up the number of trips that he took. And then finally, he, he, he discovered that there was a ministry that, in fact, he could go down and spend two, three months a year working with those kids down there. So it went from a first understanding of, boy, I, I, I'm really passionate about kids, to being able to dig deeper and to be able to find places of connectivity. And, and the joy that that brought him is, is just, I, I can't even express it. You got to bring him on one of our middle segments. All right, so let's talk about the Retirement Reformation. When people go out to retirementreformation.org, how, how are you guys helping people gain that focus? The focus on eliminating those self-indulgent things, maybe not all of them, because sometimes it's just nice to be self. I mean, of course. I don't know, it's nice to go get a massage every once in a while. It's nice to go on a vacation every once in a while. Self-indulgence isn't wrong. God gives us, um, you know, Solomon, he, he just said, hey, the pursuit of only self-indulgence is a waste of time, but you can still have fun every once in a while. But how do you guys help people focus on what is their gifting on the lane they should be running during their retirement years, even as their energy starts to wane a little bit? Well, we know that there are three stages in retirement. You've got a very active stage, you've got a more mentoring stage, and you've got a reflective stage. And so perhaps the, the expression of your passion and what God has called you to do is going to, is going to evolve. On the other hand, the passion with which you express that calling, that is not going to wane. Your ability to, as you grow closer to God, as you develop um, a greater emotional capacity to be able to bring and to be able to serve. When you focus, the odds are you're going to be able to hit the ball. If you don't focus, it's guaranteed that you won't. On the other hand, we can also see with clarity. I just had a couple, uh, a couple of months ago, I had cataract surgery. Man, can I see a lot better today than I could before? It allows me to focus. Now, on the other hand, I also bought a light that goes next to my reading table that is really bright. And so the combination of those things, man, I'm back reading the way I was, you know, 10 years ago. And so the, the idea of, of, of taking the steps to be able to understand and apply the call that God has on your life in whatever that category is uh, that, that he has uh, uh, brought, not only brought to your attention, one of the things we'll be introducing shortly is a 12-week, 11-week study guide that will help take you through from both an initial understanding to an action plan that will be real for you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to teaching that. Well, and that's the kind of resources, those, that resource coming up and so many more that help people really to focus and to, and to understand the lane that God has for them in retirement. And, and again, it's there's so much life left. I mean, as we found out that on average, somebody gets 30 years of quote unquote retirement years after they're done getting paid for their work. And some people get 50. So what do we do with that time and how do we use it? It's not, you know, you can only pick up so many seashells. You can only golf so many rounds. You can only play so much tennis. And honestly, you can only play so much tennis because eventually your knees are going to go, no, nah, you're not going to play tennis anymore. And then there's pickleball, but you can only play so much pickleball. Eventually, you just can't play. So how do, how do we use our lives for kingdom-building activities? And the people listening to your show, Bruce, these are people that love Jesus and want to know, is there more for me? I don't want to be done. And that's what retirementreformation.org offers. We're so grateful for the research you've put together, Bruce. It's fantastic. Well, it's good to do that, and they'll be continue to put more resources. And here's a thought for you. You might just consider in your life, 
what does it mean to, to stand up for the freedom message that's in the retirement reformation? Perhaps there's an act that you can take. Perhaps there's a conversation that you can have with your spouse or with a friend that says, hey, let's look at this together because then we can act in community and we can focus together and God, that's one of the ways we know from one of the other principles that that's how we learn and grow together. What a great opportunity. Check us out online, retirementreformation.org, retirementreformation.org. Bruce Brinesville, again, once again, a great conversation on focus. Principle number eight of the Retirement Reformation Manifesto. Thank you, Bruce. You're welcome. And let's never forget that I retire for him. That's right, because you've been listening to I Retire For Him, the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation, with your host, Jim Brangenberg, and, of course, the founder of the Retirement Reformation, Bruce Brinesma. We're Christ followers, and we're journeying from retirement to reformation, so we can ultimately say just what Bruce said, I Retire For Him. Thanks for listening to I Retire For Him, with your host, Jim and Martha Brangenberg, and Retirement Reformation founder, Bruce Brinesma. I Retire For Him is the mouthpiece of the Retirement Reformation. Most Christians tend to follow the world's pattern of rest and self-pampering during retirement. However, in your retirement, you can be focused on God's unique call to love, serve, and help others. This can be your best season of life if you take advantage of a life's worth of knowledge and experience and combine it with a greater freedom of time and money and invest it all in the generations both preceding and following you. The Retirement Reformation is encouraging Christians to find and follow God's call in all seasons and aspects of life, especially in retirement. Take time to sign the manifesto at retirementreformation.org and explore the wealth of resources available on our site. Join this movement of God and journey from retirement to reformation So you can say, I retire for him. Go to retirementreformation.org.